Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today it's all about the Multistrada Madness. I'm out here with my buddy who just picked up his brand new Multistrada V4 Pikes Peak. I'm on the Multistrada V4S. For the extra five grand, is it worth the money? Let's find out. So sit back, relax and come along for the ride. Right guys, so I want to give a big shout out to Quadlock for sponsoring this video. If you've not heard of Quadlock, it's the best thing ever for motorcycle phone mounts. So what we've got here is the Quadlock waterproof wireless mount. So it just pops straight on and now it's charging. And then to release, boom. But I don't just use Quadlock for my motorcycle, I also use it for, for the push pop and in the van. So what I'll do, I'll pop a link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. So right guys, uh, yeah my buddy was lucky enough to, uh, to pick up one of these Pike Peaks. Um, you know, you're sort of looking at about a nine month wait I think for most dealerships, but he managed to get a, a cancellation. Um, he's also owned a Multistrada uh, V4S um, and he's chopped it in for the Pikes Peak, uh, which you might find that sounds a little bit crazy. Um, well, let's find out what he's got to say. So yeah, today, I mean, the air temperature's measuring uh, 32 degrees, it's absolutely boiling. Um, it must be mad to go out in this heat. Um, but yeah, once you get moving, we've got the air jacket on today. These are really good. Um, but yeah, you've got to keep moving on the bike to keep that airflow going. So I'm on one of my favorite stretches of road, the Market Harbour, the B6047, uh, links Melton to Market Harbour, but lovely stretch of road where you're not sat behind uh, a car. So yeah, this, this stretch of road is one of my favorites. It's, um, if we catch it on a day where it's not very busy, then it's, uh, it's a real nice road to, to test your bike. So we right here? Yeah, we're gonna go straight over. So yeah, swing yeah, a right, okay. then an immediate left. left. And then uh, I think this is the only one turn off. So how long did you have the uh, your Multistrada before before we decided to chop it in? Yeah, since January. Since January. So how do you, how does it compare to the bike speak? Um, I, I love the Multistrada V4S. I was so impressed with that bike when I got it. Um, I mean, obviously, you, as you know, we had the Street Fighter v, V4S as well, and I just found the um, the Monstrada was just a much easier bike to ride, more comfortable, um, very sporty, um, had everything basically. Yeah. I, but when I sold the Street Fighter Morales, I thought actually, why not combine the two into one bike? And um, the Pikes Peak sort of like just gives you that little bit more sportier agility. Yeah, I mean, there's quite a lot of similarities between the two. I think the engine's the same. I think is it the same brake horsepower? Same brake horsepower, just one one extra mapping. So it's got a race mode. So it's got the race mode. So what's the difference between the two then? So there's a, a number of differences. First one is uh, both wheels are um, 17 inch, so front and rear, whereas on the V4S the front wheel is a 19 inch. So that, so that means you've got a, a, a bigger uh, tyre choice then, being standard yeah, size? basically. The rear wheel is wider, so it takes a it takes a wider tyre, more like the likes of what you get on the Panigale and the uh, Street Fighter V4S. And that's so, that a, um, so you've what size is that tire on the rear? Is that a 190? 190. Yeah, 190. 190. And I think on the I'm pretty sure there are 170 on this. Yeah. Uh, the front tire size um, is is the same bar bar the diameter. Obviously Correct. it's a, a 19 in the V4S Multistrada, um, 17 in yours. So it's going to be more more track focused. Yeah, and the rubber's different. So, oh, okay. so the rubber is very much like what you get on the standard Street Fighter. Okay, let's drop into this lay by here. Look. Right, guys. So let's just take a quick look over this bike and check out the differences.
Right, so uh, obviously the first obvious difference to me is the, the colours. And uh, I've got to say, I'm absolutely super impressed with the design on this bike. It certainly stands out from the rest. Um, is, this a, is this a carbon yeah. front piece? A so, carbon piece. So you can see around here as well. And yeah. then they use a mesh in here. So We've got the mesh. Yeah. The carbon front end looks absolutely superb. The screen looks a different shape. Um, and obviously it's in the dark, which again, really nicely done. Uh, carbon, carbon front fender. And also, if you had a, a rad guard fitted there, or does that come as standard? No, I've had a rad guard fitted there, the EvaTech. You've had an EvaTech rad guard. Let's yeah. have a, a close up of that. So yeah, this is, this is definitely something I need to do, guys. Um, I was just sort of wiping the flies off my bike this morning and, um, sort of noticed that we're getting a, a little bit of peppering on the, the, the rad under there. So um, it looks like they've dropped the price on these rad guards as well. I think for the EvaTech one, how much are they coming in at? About 130. About 130 pounds, which is well worth it. I don't know what a new radiator costs, but damn sight more than 100 and 130. And they're quite easy to fit as well. Another tap on there. It's so nice, isn't it? That did sound nice. Um, and they're quite easy to fit, so I'm going to get one of those. I'm going to fit it. We can do a video on that. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, so all in all, um, so the engine's the same, the same brake horsepower. What else is different? So first, first thing, wheels. Front and rear are both 17s. Yeah. Whereas on the V4S, front's 19, rear 17. Okay. So that's the first big difference. Then it's Olin suspension. So I didn't actually know till today, I thought we'd actually got the Olin suspension on the V4S, um, but we don't. I mean, this is a Skyhook system. Um, this is a full Olin's, is that Olin's, yep, Olin's yeah, front exactly and rear? Yeah, exactly the same as on the Street Fighter V4S. Okay. So very much more sport ride. And then um, also, if we go into the, the modes as well, I think, did you say there's an extra? Yeah, there's a race. So, so I think it drops one of the modes at the bottom. I mean, basically all the switch gear is exactly the same as the Multistrada, the screen's the same. So what you've got is race at the top. Okay. So you've got urban, touring, sport, and race. Those okay. are the four modes. Um, whereas I think on yours, you have one more below urban and, and it finishes at sport. Yep. Okay, yeah, I mean, and the um, you've, you've put the, the tank grips on. Oh, and also um, comes with a two-tone seat, but this isn't a heated seat, no? Correct, yeah. Um, heated seats are coming, but heated seats and grips on standard either. Okay, yeah, I mean, they don't like you to give, uh, even even on a this 27,000 pound motorbike, they don't want to put you any heated grips on. Well, it's uh, 20, 25 and then with all the, with the touring pack comes in at 27. 27 with the touring pack. Um, the top box that came off your last one, did it? So, Correct, yeah. So yeah, that fits straight on. So yeah, I'm quite surprised they don't come with the heated seats as, as the, the Multistrada V4S comes with them as standard. And also Andrew was saying here, he thinks these standard ones for the Pikes Peak are not as comfortable. Is that right? Yeah, I found a I rode my Multistrada V4S to go and pick this one up and the first thing I did is took this around the, um, the Peak District and I noticed straight away that the, the seat wasn't as comfortable um, um, as the heated ones. So yeah, I think definitely worth an upgrade on the, the, mm. the heated to the heated seats. Not that we'd need them in today's it's weather. 30 <laughs> degrees temperature now. Yeah, we're, we're sort of 30 degrees today. I mean, it's absolutely stiflingly hot. Although I'm not going to complain about the weather. I love the sunshine. Um, and again, it's all about having the right clothing. These air jackets, we've both got an air jacket on today. And once you get moving, the airflow is absolutely fantastic. So one of the other differences, if we go around the other side, the Pikes Peak has the single-sided swing arm, which I've got to say, I, didn't, I am a fan of the single-sided swing arm. We've got it on the Street Fighter. Um, I mean, that looks, definitely looks cool. Looks cleaner, doesn't it? It looks cleaner, and it's easy to remove the wheel if needed as well. Yeah, they fit the disc the other side of the wheel, haven't they? But the difference as well. Uh, same Brembo brakes, but the brake pads are different. 
Okay, different brake pads. I'm yes. guessing they're going to be a bit more uh, sporty feel. Again, I, th I think the same as you get in the Panigale and the uh, Street Fighter. Okay, and I'm not sure if that disc is any bigger on the back, but yeah. um, it, it probably looks bigger because the, the wheel's more, more open with a single-sided swing arm. But, I mean, either way, guys, both of these bikes are absolute animals. Um, you know, you, you've really got to uh, sort of say to yourself, what do you want the bike for? So Andrew sold his Street Fighter, hence why he's gone for the Pikes Peak to get a bit of both into one bike. You know, I'm personally going to stick with the Multistrada for the more the touring side of things, the more sort of I can perhaps do some trails. I wouldn't say I'd ever go off-roading with this bike. I just think they're too big, they're too ever, and they're too expensive to drop. So guys, which one would you pick out of the two? That is the question. If money is no object, would it be the Pikes Peak or would you stick with the V4S? Right, there's only one thing left to do. Let's go ride these beasts. Andrew's just uh, running that one in there, so we can't go uh, too crazy. What's the recommendation for the, the mileage? So yeah, 620 miles. They've advised not to get it serviced until, um, until uh, the service light comes on. Comes on, correct. Although, otherwise, otherwise um, you get it serviced, then you have to get that light reset. Yeah, you have you, to get in. But yeah, basically you can't turn the service light off, so, um, yeah, you gotta you gotta get it serviced when it comes on. 620 miles, and then uh, and then you can ride it to uh, whatever you want. Then I think do this. Do they uh, recommend keeping it under a certain amount of uh, RPMs when running them in? Uh, just under 6,000, uh, which is around about 90 miles an hour. So it's not actually that bad of running, to be honest. With you. Yeah, that's right. It's not like the old days where they used to uh, yeah, where they used to really uh, restrict you. The, um, the other thing we discovered when I uh, went to pick this bike up, because I took my old street um, Monstrada V4S, I had a gold chain on there, um, the RK525 race one. That's and right, yeah, that's that's basically uh, what you had fitted to your other uh, Monstrada, the same as me. Yeah, correct. And um, they initially checked, said, yeah, it's going to be the same, we'll be able to move that across. When they came to fit it, they discovered actually that the uh, chain's longer and it didn't surprise me because the wheel base on this bike is supposed to be one and a half inches longer than the V4S. Oh okay so, yeah so it's little things like that you know you've got to sort of obviously do your research if you're ordering a chain for these things. Yeah so you need uh, it's 126 links on this one on the the V4S it's 123 plus one so two more links basically. Okay yeah I mean one thing I would say guys is is uh, as much as both of these bikes are absolutely fantastic the one part of them that lets it down is the chain i don't know if you've seen my uh, other video uh, regarding uh, the chain and sprocket update but since i've done that it's been so much easier the the, the old chain would just seem to get rusted up so easily um so yeah definitely i'll put a link in the description uh, regarding uh, the chain and sprocket that i've put on this bike and you won't be disappointed yeah, it looks a lot nicer as well. Um, I was saying to the guy, I think they must have used uh, recycled um, steel from the old Chinese ships that sunk at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't coming up good at all. Um, they rust so quick, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I've cleaned this chain. What have I done? I've probably done a thousand miles with this chain. I've had to do a chain adjustment, which you would with any new chain after you know 100 miles or so um but only slightly and uh, the cleaning process it just looks it just finishes the bike off you know so um the other thing is when you buy a brand new bike the, the wax that comes on these chains I, i'm sure they do it just to keep the longevity on the on the chains on the shelves but yeah, so um, it's sealed. it just just flings everywhere over the bloody bike and it, uh, again it's, it just makes a mess it's a horrendous to get off as well it's better to get it off the chain first yeah definitely um and the sprocket on mine didn't uh the you know the standard sprocket wasn't brilliant either so i swapped that out and uh yeah that's, that's been a lot better since i noticed the sprocket on this is silver okay whereas, yeah. whereas on the on the v4s is generally it was black wasn't it so yeah i mean yours was black but mine was silver on the other one mine's now a black one so my original one was but, but it weren't like a uh I don't know, it's more like, it looked like an old nickel, it didn't didn't look good at all to be honest. The so, finish on it, it looked like it. Yeah, the finish was really bad on mine, so I'm not sure why ours were both different on the same bike, 
but it's just what it is. Mine was a demo bike, so I don't know if that had something to do with it. Or... I don't think so. I think it was uh, probably just what they what parts they have at the time. Same sprocket size. Just you're always going to get variants. I know um, some components are a real shortage at the moment. Uh, generally, throughout the whole of the industry, not just the motorbike, but motor motor car industry as well. So I think tyres are, are are a problem. Um, getting tyres at the moment because of I think there's a compound that comes from Russia. Right. Yeah. I've noticed on a few websites I'm uh, trying to buy some um, tyres for the for the Street Fighter for this next track day that I'm doing, and um, yeah, it looks like uh, there's a bit of a, a sort of uh, demand for those as well. Some websites are even saying 55 days. I don't know what that's yeah. all about. But. Yeah. The and um, interesting enough that those chains we got, Twiggers was able to get them next day, wasn't he? Yeah. Now, now uh, I think it's eight weeks lead time on them. Eight weeks for a chain. That's just crazy. Yeah. So how do you how do you find the bike sort of like handles with the uh, the wider back tire on? So uh, the first thing I noticed it seems a little bit lighter and more agile, so it flicks a lot quicker. Yeah. And I think part of that is there's a little bit of a weight loss between the two bikes as well. I, th I think that it's around three four kilograms. Okay. And most of that is actually in the wheels because it's the Maserati wheels it's got in. Yeah, but I mean, you're like four kilo heavier than me, so, you know, we're on par there now, aren't we? Um, am I really? <laughs> <laughs> or is it the other way around? I forget. <laughs> I know those levers were a bit tight the other week. Yeah. I'm blaming lockdown for that. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, this bike, I don't, I don't find it, it a problem like heavy, you know. You, you assume they're big, heavy bikes and they're not. You know, they are when you're trying to push them around on a bit of pea gravel, but but generally, that, when they get moving and you put it in sports mode, it stiffens up, it, it, the, the power's there, I, I, I don't have a problem, but it'd be interesting to see what yours rides like. Yeah, I think that um, the Multistrides are generally much sportier road handling than a lot of the adventure bikes anyway. Yeah. Um, so straight away, the thing that I was so impressed with when I had my uh, V4S Multistrada was just how sporty a ride it was. Mm -hmm. And um, I know a couple of my friends went to Italy and they rented Multistradas. One of them has a Tiger. And uh, he said he noticed a massive difference in the handling compared to the Tiger. Okay. So that was interesting. But this just goes up another level. Um, it just makes it a bit more sportier again. So, um, and I think that comes from its stance, the suspension, the tyres, okay. primarily. Yeah, well, I'm, I can't wait to uh, jump on yours and have a little go and uh, see what the difference is, you know. It's, yeah. um, uh, um, so we've just pulled into McDonald's. We're a bit more uh, gourmet uh, dining again. <laughs> but, but yeah, so what, we were going to go get, get, a, get a milkshake and a... And a, and a cool down. See, even the uh, local police over there have uh, decided to have the the same uh, idea. There you go, guys. So uh, out of the other half live. Uh, we've gone for the quality 99 pence on offer, quarter pound new cheese, large fries, and a strawberry milkshake. Right, so uh, I'm not sure what the temperature is now, but it's only going up. It's about 30 degrees plus, maybe 32 even now. So now it's my turn to have a go on this amazing V4 Pikes Peak. 36 degrees. It's <laughs> 36 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> wow, I know, it'll come down a bit when we get moving. Yeah. It's in the sun, isn't it? <laughs> to about 34. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to uh, having a spin on this and uh, just to see what the, the difference is. Yeah, so I can hear a... There's a bit of a rasp, but I mean, it, it's not majorly different, is it, on the, the sound, but there is a difference, but... Not much. Oh, so nice just to get that airflow going. It is. Still showing 34. Oh yeah, I can definitely uh, feel. That, that front end feels so different. It does look a bit more planted. Yeah. As soon as I sat on this, I thought, well, this, it feels so much different. 
Yeah, straight, straight the way I see. It's quite, it's quite a big difference. I didn't really expect to. Uh, you know, literally, I've only just jumped on it, and yeah, it feels, feels like a lot more sportier, doesn't it? Yeah, a lot more sportier. Obviously, and and what tyres do they put on these now? Because they're not the they're not the same as mine, are they? They're not the Prelude no. the Scorpions. No, the the Rosso Fours. The Rosso Fours. Now, am I right in saying that's um, they've replaced the Rosso Twos with the Fours? Yeah, two. I think they had a three even in there, but uh, the two's gone now. And uh, the two was what they originally fitted to the Street Fighter V4S two years ago when they first came out. Yep. I've and then they've gradually upgraded them. Yeah, you can definitely. Uh, I can, I can, I can sort of tell the the, the, the power and the riding position is very, very similar. Um, I can feel like them pegs are are in a slightly different place. Yeah, there's definitely that combination of like it. It feels a bit more like that street fighter. Yeah. So so far, um, this bike feels so much more nimbler. It's like I'm actually quite shocked. Well, the, the, the difference of the feel, I thought they were just going to feel more or less the same. Yeah, it's impressive actually, it's impressive. It really is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just feel, you know, like you you want to go race. <laughs> yeah, well, you, for me, you got the best of both worlds, you got the Touring, which you want, a, you want a nice comfortable bike like that, with all the gear on it, and then you've got a bike that you can go and sort of take out for a good old sports ride as well. And let's face it, the other thing as well, you're not going to see many of these on the road, are you? Especially in today's climate where, you know, there's a bit of a waiting list for them. I mean, you got lucky with this one, didn't you? How how long were you supposed to be waiting for it? Uh, next May. So next May, you know, we're in, um, we're in July at the minute and um, Andrew here was lucky enough that somebody cancelled their order and uh, they gave him a call and, um, yeah, he's, he went and picked it up like last week. So um, you only... You only had to wait a, a couple of weeks, was it? Um, a couple of weeks, yeah, yeah. from ordering it. it basically, um, they rang me up, said there's a bike coming in a week, guys cancelled for whatever reason. And um, but fortunately, I had a deposit down. And if I hadn't had the deposit down, obviously, I wouldn't have got that call. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the way to do it then. But I'll tell you what, just I mean, just doing a few of these like. Uh, Bendy roads. We're getting on the bends now. I'm starting to feel the, the, the difference. Yeah, like you said, it, this bike definitely feels more planted to the ground. Yeah. That Nolan uh, suspension makes a big difference, definitely. But you, you're not going to see many of them about. It's. Uh... No, I think somebody said to me that allocation-wise for 2022, most dealers are only seeing about four bikes at the most. But, and also, you've got to remember the costume bowl here, you know. It, yeah. is, it is a lot of money, you know. These these bikes, whether it's the, the V4S Multistrada or this bike speak, they're not cheap. I can tell on this bike that, that there's such a difference in the handling. Uh, straight away, as soon as you get on it, there's, there's quite a, a big noticeable difference. Um, Again, a lot of it comes down to really what do you want the bike to do, you know? If you're going to be mainly just riding on the road and you want something that you can have that sporty feel, then definitely the Pikes Peak is going to be the one for you there. It's, yeah, you know, I mean, the top and bottom of it for me is like, you know, an extra five grand for the Pikes Peak. I don't know if I could justify that. And if I sold my Street Fighter, then I can see why uh, Andrew's picked this bike over his V4S that he, he had. All in all, it's absolutely superb bike and it handles as well as the Street Fighter in, in my eyes. Um, just that you've got the comfort, you've got the panniers, you've got the whole setup of these bikes that just does the job. So which one would you choose then, guys? They're both fantastic bikes. If you're not subscribed to the channel, then please do so. Give us a like and we'll see you in the next one.